Does this defense have any heart? That's no. Tough. They suck. Versatility. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? Jordan Stan Carter. It's like they shit on you. They shit on you. <laughs> Like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope you all are having a great hump day. This is a short week for the Dallas Cowboys that will be on the practice field today. And my God, we have some incredible, oh my goodness, incredible news. People have been saying that, oh my God, he keeps saying we've got bad news, we got great news. This is true, but it's really what's happening. We end up having great news because as we listen in for our practice, we, we talking about practice, not, not the game, not the game. Now we talking about practice. As we talk about practice, we have incredible news. Two of the Cowboys, most trusted veterans reading from the Dallas morning news Two of the Cowboys, most trusted veterans are making progress in the return from injuries that could be ready to play Saturday. What are you kidding me? Starting left tackle Tyron Smith, who missed Sunday's loss to the Dolphins with a back injury, said he feels better this week. Smith said he doesn't have a stinger, uh, something that he's dealt with in the past. He labeled the injury as a back issue that's being absent last week. Let it calm down. So here's where I'm reading between the lines, okay? I have uh, one of these backs that I can be lifting all kinds of stuff, you know, mixing up, you know, 50 bags of cement and doing sidewalks and things like that, and nothing happens. And then I can do something crazy like turn around and reach back for this knife, and all of a sudden, you get a back spasm. And when you get those back spasms, it literally feels like somebody is sticking a knife in your back and twisting it. And sometimes you're just kind of walking and it just locks up and it's just like, it's like somebody has just shocked the crap out you. I'm assuming that maybe that's what it was. He's having back spasms uh, or something. I, again, I'm not a doctor. I haven't talked to Tyron Smith. I don't know. I'm just going by what my personal life is. For me, what I've learned with my back, okay, the first time I ended up having back problems from putting up all these lay-in light fixtures and I kept throwing them up. And this is what I've learned with my back is a lot of side-to-side -side motions. If I'm using the shaper and making tons and tons of doors, my back starts to tighten up. So I learn, do some, stretch, do some, stretch. You learn how to deal with it. But what I learned the first time was when my back started having back spasms, I said, I'm just going to lay down and just wait for it to go away. It didn't go away. It was weeks and stuff in there. It got so bad that when I would try and get up, I literally almost cock out on myself. I literally almost did because it was that painful. What I've learned is when my back starts flaring up is I got to work through that sucker. I mean, seriously, I just got to keep on pushing. It's painful, but, you know, it will right itself. I, I think the extra movement and stuff keeps it from locking up. But that's me. So that is incredible news right there because no disrespect to Igota, who maybe should have been playing guard. He wasn't Tyron Smith, you know, and it wasn't necessarily his blocking ability as much as it was understanding what his assignment was. He's helping in the inside while Chubb is going on the outside, around the outside, around the outside. Um, so that is good news if he can return. Although if it is questionable, if he's not quite there, they may be better suited and wait. Just wait to the playoffs because I want a healthy Tyron Smith in the playoffs. Um, and then we have Hankins, okay? Now, it's a misnomer that the Cowboys' run defense was ass. It was ass against Buffalo when they gave up 260 yards uh, on the ground, 266. Uh, against Miami, they only gave up 91, which is not bad. But Hankins, who has had the high ankle sprain, which they deemed, you know, not, not the severe portion of it, was deemed more of the moderate one, um, said he is going into the, uh, excuse me, uh, Hankins was hopeful he'll return at the end of the regular season. He gave response when asked if he was going to return for the postseason. Regular season, Hankins said. He said he's going to be back for the regular season. 
So that is great news. Um, we still have an opportunity, to believe it or not, after losing two games. And this is what's crazy is we haven't necessarily gotten any better um, as far as catching the pack, but the pack has come back to us. The Eagles have won one of their last four games. I mean, that's that's pretty bad. And they could literally have lost against the, the New York Giants, which is kind of crazy, which is why – the media is killing them and basically saying they ain't going anywhere. But, you know, the thing about the NFL is things change quickly. Uh, I want to play an interesting take here this morning because, of course, we have the Eagle fans are back because they got to win. But Jalen Hurts takes a shot at Eagle fans. And this is like it's like every day another shoe drops um, with the team. You know, yesterday it was A.J. Brown, you know, comments about after the game. That he basically said, I got nothing to say, okay, or there's nothing good to say. Um, right there, you seemed like, you know, the fans are all turning on him and calling him a diva. and it, It's just getting ugly there in their situation. But Jalen Hurts, man, listen to this clip. I'm just, just trying to operate it rather than, yeah, I'm just trying to operate it. Kind of get loud on offense. They're supposed to get loud for the for the defense, not the I don't really pay too much attention to it. I'm just just trying to operate it rather than yeah. I'm just trying to operate it. Kind of get loud on offense. They're supposed to get loud for the for the defense, not us. The They're supposed to get loud for the defense, not for us. Are Eagle fans messing it up for the offense? Are the Eagle fans to blame for the woes with the Philadelphia Eagles? I don't know, but it sounds good anyway. All right, so Jerry Jones, King Jerry, who will have the world watching how him and Jimmy Johnson on Saturday night go through and do the induction of Jimmy Johnson into the Ring of Honor, something that I think should have actually happened two years ago when we were playing San Francisco, that home game. I think that that would have given the Cowboys some extra momentum, some extra mojo, and I thought that that would be the perfect moment to set the tone, but... What do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll. But let's listen in uh, to ESPN because, you know, we got to see what the competition is doing. But they've got questions going into the playoffs as we get out of here. Dan Graziano in for Greeny Kimberly Martin here at the Seaport with me. Uh, Dominique Foxworth and, and Swagoo are around. up there. They are. They're, they're in there. They're hanging out with us on a Wednesday morning to talk a little football. Guys, we have just two weeks left in the regular season. The playoffs are coming quick, and I have some questions. Dominique, my first question is for you. Will the Eagles, can the Eagles get their defense together in time? Can they, they've got reinforcements coming, Darius Slay, they made the change on the coaching staff, they picked up some guys at the trade deadline. Can that defense get fixed in time for the playoffs? Yeah, they picked up some big names in uh, Shaq Leonard and Bayard uh, to support the interior of that defense. But a lot of defense is about coordination and communication. And they haven't had a lot of time together just yet. So I think they'll be good against the mediocre teams, but we all know they got to beat the 49ers, and I don't think they're ready for them yet. Kimberly Martin, it's tough to find fault with what the Ravens are doing, but they've had fourth quarter leads in all three of their losses. So my question is, do they have what it takes to close out games in the fourth quarter in the postseason? Daniel, I think they definitely do. Listen, Patrick Smith and Roquan Queen, excuse me, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, there we go, the twins, they're basically my spirit animals. These guys are closers. Kyle Hamilton on the ground one minute, intercepting passes the next. I think this team is peaking at the right time. The Ravens are good. Certainly look good on Christmas night. Swagoo, the last question is for you. Is the Cowboys running game going to be something that travels in the playoffs? Are they going to be able to win with that running game? Grass, it better for my for my sane my sane my sanity. But, That's not but what I was yes, asking. I believe it will. One uh, right, one because one because I think they they now, especially after this Miami game, understand that that's going to be an integral part. And the other part of this as well is that Dak Prescott is going to have to use his legs in order for this offense to be at his full yes, maximum capacity. We saw him do it earlier, so I hope hopefully they'll take it into the playoffs with him.
hopefully, you know who else hopes that is uh, their uh, team owner, Jerry Jones, who was speaking on his, uh, I guess, on his regular radio show yesterday, still <laughs> confident in his team's outlook despite this, this past week's loss to the Dolphins in Miami. Take a listen. I tried to be as realistic as I could. Uh, I wouldn't trade our position uh, for a better one today. Uh, and it has everything to do with how healthy we are at key spots. I think Dax is the best he's been in his career. And I think if you can go into uh, this part of your season in the NFL and your quarterback is playing at this level, uh, you've got an outstanding chance to um, uh, come home happy. See. A lot of what he says makes sense, but one key thing he said didn't make any. Who would not trade their position That's for a what better I'm wondering. one? Like I, uh, we love Jerry Jones, yeah. but None of why it would sense. he not trade his position? <laughs> like right now, we're looking at this team, wondering can it win on win against good teams on the road, a team that is wonderful at home, but it still has questions. Like they're literally coming off a loss, and he mm -hmm. says I wouldn't trade my position. I think I would trade my position with. The team that has the best record in the NFL? Sure. First round by, that kind of thing. But I like the confidence. This is a roster. They should have confidence in this roster. They have all the pieces. They got the quarterback. They got the defense. They just need to put it together. Amen on that. So I think it's going to take some doing for them to catch the Eagles and win the division. Mm -hmm. They need help from yeah. Arizona or the Giants, and they need to take care of their own business. So maybe Jerry's just sort of you know, getting his mind around the fact that it's going to be a wild card season, that, that they're going to have to play on the road. And he's saying, that's fine, no problem. Neek, we asked Swagu about the run game. We saw that a highlight of Tony Pollard getting stuffed on the one-yard line in their first drive the other day. Is this going to be a problem? And if so, is it one that Dak Prescott can help them overcome? Yeah, it's definitely going to be an issue. Swagoo pointed this out to me last season, and I didn't think it was going to be a problem in the playoffs, but it certainly reared its head when they saw San Francisco. The running attack is something you're going to need. Good running and good defense in the playoffs seems to be one of the things that no matter how much the game changes, you need it. So the Cowboys need to be able to figure out how to get one yard with their top back yeah. in that situation. And I will say, Jerry Jones just be saying a lot of words, man, because yes. he said we healthy in the right positions. That's exactly not what, the, I mean, that's exactly what they aren't. Like, yes, mm -hmm. they're healthy at quarterback and he's playing well, but left tackle, not healthy. Starting corner, top corner at least, not healthy. Two of the most important positions on the field. Mm -hmm. There are issues with stopping the run. They're not healthy at defensive tackle right now. So I'm not sure what he talk about, but they just put a mic in front of that man. He just let it come out. <laughs> that, that is true. History has shown us that that is the case, and, and he likes to, to, uh, to help create content for folks, including <laughs> us, and we appreciate that. Swagoo, oh, the team that the Cowboys that. play this weekend is the Detroit Lions. They clinched their division uh, this past weekend. This is a team that the Cowboys could conceivably face again in January in a playoff game. What does Dallas need to prove this Saturday against Detroit? Well, first of all, Foxy, when you punch me in my eye, don't hit me in the back with a baseball bat after that, okay? <laughs> Just give me one bad thing at a time. We got two hours on this show. Just give I'm me sorry. one bad thing per conversation, okay? I can, like, give we it can to get me to in, the next bad levels. thing the next right. hour. <laughs> yeah, the next hour, man. Here, here's, the, here's, what I, here's what I want to see uh, from, from Dallas Grise more. We talked about a little bit of that run game. When you get to the playoffs, now you need the, it. that's not the time to get it going. These last couple of games, whether it's wild card, th th that's, to me, that's a far gone conclusion. Whatever happens, you still have to go into the playoffs against really good teams and win football games. One, this run game has to come to a head, man. Like, th this is the part of this team which is probably going to give people that actually watch it the confidence that Dallas can do what they need to do and at least be in games when it comes to the fourth quarter. The other thing is this, when you look at the Cowboys play, when we start talking about these road woes, and a lot of times we get locked in on defense, this defense only gave up 22 points to Miami. Now, I may be blind, deaf, and dumb, but I remember sitting here on TV hearing about how prolific the Miami mm -hmm. Dolphins offense was. So if you were going to tell me that our defense was only going to surrender 22 points, I would have probably picked Dallas to win that game. Run game, run game, run game. And y'all kill me and Jeff Saturday for talking about this. Yeah. But the run game is more about <laughs> a complimentary piece to your defense 
and what you yeah. allow them to have the ability to do throughout a playoff run as opposed playoffs. to us just thinking they're going to line down and teams going to let them sack their quarterback a million times. It has to be an integral part of what they do if they're going to have success. Yeah, these, these <clears throat> Pollard highlights are not uh, very encouraging. I, can't, I still can't believe he doesn't get in uh, that, uh, that goal line <laughs> carry. Like, I can see that a million times and not understand yeah. how that happens. Kimberly, when you talk about – uh, them playing Detroit at home this weekend. Yeah. Is there anything they can show you that would change your mind about the Cowboys? No. All right. Honestly, um, because I understand what Marcus is saying about <laughs> they need to. No, no, no. no. The reason I no, no, no. The reason it was I a yes and no question. I deserved it. The reason I say that is because they are excellent at home. Yes. This is a team that they have all the pieces. Yes, they have to get the run game going. But we've seen Dallas beat teams at home. They've beaten the Eagles. Like they've beaten good teams. Mm -hmm. For me, the question about Dallas remains them on the road. Mm -hmm. So them playing, a, you know, in Arlington, like, I, okay. Right. I, I, I would not be surprised if they won this game, but I also wouldn't have any answers to the question of can they go on the road and beat, beat a good team. And it's extremely likely they will have to do that in the playoffs just so we can remind people where things stand in the NFC East. The Eagles right now have an 81% chance to win the division, which of course would give them the first round home game and send Dallas on the road. If the Eagles win this week, they're playing That's Arizona, so that moves up to 92% chance. Dallas, they, there's That's a silver lining. More. If Philly does lose to Arizona or in week 18 to the Giants, the odds swing back in the Cowboys' favor because they seem to have the tiebreaker edge, but they would need uh, a Philadelphia loss in order to take advantage of that. that. Let's play a game now that we like. Uh, we're not going to play the game now. We need Philadelphia to lose to the Cardinals. Um, nothing would be better for their offensive coordinator, who became the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, to come in and bitch slap them. That's just me, okay? Maybe, maybe I'm salty. Maybe uh, who knows? But it's true what they said exactly. A couple of things. It, it's it's comical, or actually, I feel vindicated because talking with uh, Game Time, we did an afternoon um, live stream yesterday, um, and we were talking about it. And I said we're going to have to have Dak Prescott's going to have to run flat out because our running game we've been under 100 yards the last two weeks and that's been one of the bugaboos that we've had in the playoffs so we'll see what the cowboys can manufacture if tyron smith is back on the field that definitely bodes well for them all right good people we're going to roll out of here and get some work done here at the red brick house i'm mark holmes and i appreciate you guys peace